evening and welcome. This is Strong and Sassy on your Superstation Joy 99.7 FM. I'm really excited about tonight's conversation. And if you are listening to us, uh, me talking to Evans, then you know why. It's everything to do with motherhood, children and choices. What the show is not... It's not a show um, where we're going to discuss why you should or shouldn't trap your boyfriend into having a baby when he doesn't want to. It's not that kind of show. It's the kind of show where we're actually going to talk about options that you can take in choosing when you want to have a kid, how you want to have a child, whether you're ready or not, and the real options that are out there because of technology that allow you to make these decisions. Um, a few years ago, it wasn't like that. So it's a really good place that we're in and we're going to have a conversation about that my name is Enimo Enimado this is Strong and Sassy on Joy 99.7 FM don't go anywhere we'll be right back welcome back this is Strong and Sassy here on Joy 99.7 FM today our show is up until 7.50 because apparently there's a football match so um, Real Madrid and um, somebody but I'm sure you guys are really excited so the sports team will be taking over at 7.50 but until then I have two um, amazing women with me in the studio tonight both of them first time on Strong and Sassy um, and I'm really excited. So I have Dr. Demi Lechadria, who's a Deputy Executive Director for Total Family Health Organization. Hello. Hi, Nimoa. It's so good <laughs> to have you here. Oh, thank you for having me. Yay. <laughs> and also Dr. Nita Asamwa Menuchima, who is a specialist obstetrician gynecologist. Um, also, um, your first time here. You're welcome, Doc. Thank you very much. It's so great to have you here as well. Okay. Um, so, it's International Women's Month, pretty much. Okay. And um, we're talking a lot about technology. And so we thought, why don't we talk about the advancements that technology has allowed and um, when it comes to area of fertility. But before we do that, though, um, Dr. Lecha, you have a background in public health. Yes. Um, and so you can imagine that for this conversation, one of the major barriers that we had or have is the mental... Um, I'm not sure what word to use that goes with having a conversation like this. Mm -hmm. So already, you know, we've had feedback. What do you mean women must choose? What do you mean women can't choose? How are you going to freeze your eggs? How does somebody carry a baby for you? And and these are major things here in Ghana. Mm -hmm. um, so I really want us to start um, with you kind of addressing some of these concerns or some of these mindsets that we've had that are not allowing women to find the freedom in the choice. Well, when it comes to family planning, contraception, and uh, essentially reproductive health, uh, a lot of the time, because of our own cultural norms and traditions, we tend to be very uncomfortable speaking about it. Mm. Um, but health professionals such as myself and Dr. Nita, we're here to really bring information so people know, and then they can choose the right choices for themselves. So really, the conversation is just to be educative, to bring insight and knowledge and awareness to people so they are able to make the right choice for themselves. Do you think that it's a woman's decision or is it a, a couple's decision? And where there's conflict, do we, you know, go to the, it's my body, my choice, or do we call, I mean, how, how do we go around it in, in the first place? Even? Well, the thing is, it's your reproductive health is your right. You have the right to access information to access choices, knowledge, everything. So those are guaranteed for you. And actually un under the laws of Ghana or in Ghana, uh, you reserve those rights as an individual human being. Even for adolescents who are sexually active mm. or not, they still reserve the right to the information. Now for women who happen to be in relationships or in marriages, certainly it's your body, your choice, however, because you're in union or in a partnership with somebody who could be uh, a fiance, um, a boyfriend or a husband, certainly having that discussion is important. So I always say men's knowledge and awareness of reproductive health issues is also key. So certainly uh, it's worthy of a discussion. However, we are working with women and women have the right to own their bodies and to decide how and when 
and in what way they want to have children. So certainly, um, it's important. There's no need for acrimony. There's no need to, <laughs> to you know, yeah. uh, have a fight. Uh, it's just it's simply as a conversation that has to be had. Mm. Yes. So in your experience um, in, in dealing with, with some of these issues, do you feel like um, the, the men have come a, a way, a certain way f in terms of exploring some of these options because you know a few years well maybe not a few years many years ago if you're married to a man and you're in the house and you can't have children the next thing you hear is that you know i are all you care about like you know they've gone and brought another woman mm -hmm. or so she's mm -hmm. gone and you know impregnated mm -hmm. somebody mm -hmm. and and that is it you have mm -hmm. nothing to say there's been no conversation there's been no exploration right do you feel like in your experience is changing are we getting better as a society are we more open do you find people asking more questions well i think in the younger generation that's changing a bit that that shift has taken place where men are more aware uh, we have the internet where you can find information not all information is right information though however we have choices where you know people can go and access right information um, so that is changing a bit but there are a lot of pockets of gender inequality and inequity and all of these things really do come in uh, so I wouldn't say we've moved a hundred percent you know across board and have have changed as a society um, although we're moving forward in the modern world with the modern times there's still pockets of areas where these cultural uh, ideations still hold very strong that's why we're all here we're always spreading the word, the word yeah. trying to get people involved people of all ages of all classes of all socioeconomic status and so forth so that we can really Really, uh, begin to move forward as a country when it comes to women and their reproductive health rights. Okay, um, so I'm coming to Dr. Nita now, but Dr. Alesha, do feel free to button, um, you know, whenever you... you sure, we're having a conversation, yeah, so exactly. certainly. Thank you anymore. Um, <laughs> so, so, Doc, um, I was just telling Evans, I found this Princeton study that, that showed that as a woman has children, her earning value decreases apparently um, according to the Princeton study after your first kid your your salary bargaining power even the value of your salary decreases by 20% and then it's four percent per child after that yeah. that's in the US I mean I don't know if anybody's measuring that in in Ghana but we do know how people go on maternity leave and come back and they've lost their jobs mm -hmm. yeah. so I mean enter egg freezing mm -hmm. because then it allows me to say you know I'm doing really well I'm gonna wait like 10 years What's that like? Do you, are women more open to doing it? And, and what, what does that l even look like in the first place? Okay, so I would say that recently fertility preservation has um, come up um, in recent times. And it's not really because they want to keep their, should I say, their birthing on hold. Mostly it's for people who, let's say, are having issues with fertility. Let's say a couple and then they would want to try some sort of other means of getting pregnant and we studies have shown that it's not fertility is not solely the woman mm. it's a third from the man a third from the woman and then a third from either unknown cause, causes or combination of both man and woman factors it's not like before that we all used to think that oh if a woman can't get pregnant it's because of she the woman but now it's becoming more and more People are becoming more and more aware that it's because of the man. So let's say they try other means of trying to get pregnant. There are several ways. We have something we call ICSI, which especially if the man has a low sperm count, then they take the sperm directly. They get a semen, get the sperm, and then inject it into the woman. And then we also have some, something we call, um, there are all forms of IVF. So let's say the couple have... Um, they've taken eggs from the woman, they've taken sperm from the man, they've fertilized, and then they have a number of embryos. So instead of throwing the extra away, they then freeze this embryo. Oh, so we're not freezing eggs, eggs. We we're can freezing freeze in either of them. So you can either freeze your eggs mm -hmm. or you can freeze the, the embryo. embryo. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. I remember there was some super, some celebrity in their custody battle they were battling yes. frozen em embryos yes, yes. 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 okay so okay. you can either freeze your eggs or let's say freeze your embryos so that if at a later time they want to use those embryos again instead of going through the whole process all over again they can now just inseminate the embryos and then we have those who, who would want to in um, freeze only their eggs probably they have um let's say a cancer of the ovary 
and for some reason the ovaries need to be taken away so then they can freeze some of the eggs mm. and then have the surgery and take the ovaries out later on after they've recovered and then they now want to get pregnant then they can use those eggs or for some reason the their ovaries are failing earlier we call something premature ovarian insufficiency if they are failing then they are not ready to have kids at that time they can take some of the eggs out and then freeze them for a later date or like you're saying for career reasons mm -hmm. somebody wants to advance in her career if she looks at the timeline she's probably going to do 10 extra years and let's say she's 25 or 30 then she would want to freeze those eggs and then at a later time bring them back but then we should be aware that your fertility generally decreases as you age age is the single most important factor that affects your fertility from your late teens up to about late um, 20s that's when you are most fertile so um after 35 it starts to go down and down and down so some people if for their career reason they want to freeze those ones they can freeze the younger eggs mm. and then later on use because if you freeze older eggs i mean it may work but then the chances of oh. abnormalities or failure right is higher okay so then those are some of the reasons why people i mean so eggs. basically if mm -hmm. you are like me at 40 mm -hmm. it's not now that you are coming to freeze your eggs mm -hmm. ideally you should have frozen them yeah, well, you, it's 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 not <laughs> cut in stone that like you can't freeze your eggs when you are 40 but then they would explain the risks to you okay that if you do these are some of the things that may happen we may even use your eggs but they may not fertilize or the the pregnancy may not work so after 40 most places we use uh should donor i say donor eggs, eggs. Mm -hmm. to you to um inseminate or to should i say mix with a mm. man's sperm but then it's your choice if you still mm. want to use your own you would have to understand the risk that go with it are we, we go open ahead. to that the the whole egg donor um sperm donor thing are we actually as a society really open to that well some some should i say some agencies or some fertility clinics do that but it's not as common as sperm donation i mean okay yeah, there, there are lots more people who donate sperms than those because who donate so if, if obviously if you're a woman and you want to have a kid and you don't have a partner mm -hmm. then you'll get um yes. you'll get the the sperm y yes you know it's easier to donate sperm than to donate <laughs> egg yeah. Uh -huh. yeah so um it's a whole lot of processes so it's not so easy to just get people all over the place and just to donate their eggs so if let's say there was somebody listening to us and mm -hmm. and she's done these tests and you know her eggs are not viable mm -hmm. or, or useful anymore mm -hmm. you can use a family you can ask your sister yes you can ask sister a mother a cousin probably usually somebody who's closer if you want a family okay but you can also use friends it doesn't necessarily have to be related to you or you can use um, somebody's only you're not familiar with but then I mean I, I'm, I'm thinking the argument we were, but the child is not going to look like me no they're going to look like them like them or okay like them plus your partner that's if your yeah. partner is donating yeah, the sperm but not all biological children look, look like this like <laughs> yeah. and then you know we have adoption and all that so even those children we consider them as our children hmm. so you would still have to carry the pregnancy if you want to yeah but that child will not be biologically yours maybe the donor plus your partner so at least <laughs> I, yes. I, I, I don't know how um how we we, we feel about that it's, it's it's a bit of a mental hurdle to, yes, to cross it's, 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 it's a lot of emotional and mental and psychological and financial issues when it has to it's yeah. expensive yeah how is. expensive is it you want me to quote a price no i just like <laughs> uh, you know an idea like okay is it like around 20k 30k oh, starting okay. from 40 budget 100 <laughs> you know sell your house oh. sell your existing children <laughs> so i mean like what what kind of just so that people well, most have. most places probably around let's say five thousand dollars or more okay so starting uh, from about 50k ghana cities probably yeah okay so it's not cheap no it's not the fertility cheap. process is not cheap it's not cheap so most people 
would um you you would have to discuss it with your doctor or with your partner and prepare adequately for it because it's not really a hundred percent even normal pregnancy that god gives us is not preg is not hundred mm. percent i think it's about 25 to 30 so the ivf process is just adds on a little percentage to it, to it. so um, when the couple come, they need to understand that what is going to happen is not going to be like 100% you're going to get pregnant. So they, you have to manage your expectations and then prepare adequately for it. Some people can go and come a few times. Some people can just do one time and then not. Sometimes if you are lucky in the process, you can even get pregnant. Mm. Mm -hmm. So that I've, you, I've heard that mm -hmm. uh, yeah. th those kind of stories of a few yes. times. Occasionally it happens. And I mean, of course, that's a lot of financial relief. But it is, isn't yes, it? Yes, yes, yeah. yes. They, we um, still have to so, 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 Dr. Alasha, you yes. know, there's this thing that I've heard a number of people say mm -hmm. that when you use contraception when mm -hmm. you're you're younger, right? Especially, I think the pill, the injectables, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the menares, the mm -hmm. they they mess up your. I I I know it's not true, but obviously I'm not a doctor, mm -hmm. so. But there are people who think that. Mm -hmm. So clarify for us okay. that the, the contraceptives that we use when mm -hmm. we're not ready to have children, mm -hmm. do they affect our ability to have children, especially the, the ones that actually we ingest as opposed to like a condom? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so let me just give the listeners a broad overview of the family planning or contraception methods that we have available. So it's into two broad categories, your short acting methods and then your long acting methods okay so short acting methods could be a condom and you know it's one sexual act versus one condom they are not reusable they are not Those reusable remove it and wash it yes you have to stop that. <laughs> <laughs> so one condom per act so that's that's a short acting method uh, there's also the oral contraceptive pills that's also a short acting method uh, we have our injectables another um you know every a three monthly injectable so those are usually your short acting methods then we have the long acting methods that are able to stay in for a number of years so you have your intrauterine device it's about the size of a matchstick mm. um you know usually it's in a t-shape and then it's inserted in the uterus some do have uh copper others have uh you know progesterone that is released minimally over a number of years so it could you could have a five-year one or a 10 year one then there's also the implant which is inserted just subcutaneously mm. and it also stays there and it's hormone releasing so under the skin mm, under the skin yes yeah. just under the skin and you know so that also you know there are several brands of that but usually people are able to wear for about three years um or doc would you, wouldn't you say yes, some go we have there are two types we have the three year one the and three year one, one. Okay. yes so, so so those are the longer acting methods the one that stay with you for a number of years um generally this myth or misconception about family planning is prevalent people do think that return to fertility after you've used contraception for a number of years or for some time is difficult but that is not always the case um, for many family planning methods return to fertility is within the year so okay. if I know finally I'm done with school I'm married I'm settled I have a job I've been there for a number of years I think I want to try to have children now you know then you can you know if it's a long acting method you can have it removed or if it's a short acting method then of course you can then uh, stop, stop using it mm -hmm. and then usually return to fertility if there are no other extenuating circumstances we tend to forget issues with the partner we tend to forget many other things but if there are no other extenuating circumstances return to fertility should be uh pretty normal normal yes okay regular. so so for, for those of us listening to mm -hmm. us who um, maybe are having a bit of conflict with their partner about right. uh, maybe I want to wait and have a kid next year but mm -hmm. so I want to get an idea what's get what you are saying is that using contraception today will not affect whether or not you can have a kid next year 
Yes. yes, it doesn't. It doesn't. So I just want to make it clear. Using contraception does not mean that eventually you will not have kids. That is not the case. It's a myth. Uh, using contraception doesn't mean that it would travel somewhere and something would happen to you. Or the, the contraception methods that decrease your menses doesn't mean that it's trapped somewhere. So there are lots of myths and mm. misconceptions yeah. that are rooted in lack of knowledge mm. uh, and an understanding of the process uh, of how families planning works or contraception works and then that breeds all the myths and misconceptions that people have but that shouldn't be the case so I advise all persons you can visit uh, your local Ghana Health Service Center um, or hospital or facility or even a private clinic and there should be a health provider who can then explain all the methods to you and uh, you should be able to you know understand and then decide what you want to do for yourself okay um dr needs i want to talk about surrogacy okay. but before um okay. just a little yeah, bit sure. to the family planning mm -hmm. okay so um what family planning does we have the hormonal and then we have the non-hormonal ones most of the hormonal ones um, prevents you from have ovulating so um, that's what would stop the menses from coming so when you stop using it you your ovulation starts all over again and for some people it may take a while before they start ovulating, ovulating again, again. Okay. so once you haven't ovulated de definitely you're not gonna get pregnant so that's why it makes them think that they are not that's going to get pregnant okay. afterwards okay. and then the non-hormonal one is a mm -hmm. copper that one because it doesn't change your hormonal system then immediately you take it out it takes sometimes even that cycle or the next or a couple of mm -hmm. cycles more then you would have your um, should i say you'd be able your to get pregnant yeah. Yeah. yeah so um contraception does not affect your fertility other things like if you were contraceptive method for 10 years that means your fertility has gone down because if you're 25 now mm -hmm. by the time you take it out you'll be 35 so, so it has nothing to do with the contraception, with the contraception. It has to do with the fact that you're growing you're growing yes. okay yes. okay yeah so it doesn't affect your fertility okay well yeah. thank you for that okay. I, th I feel like that that's a major thing mm -hmm. yeah. um so surrogacy mm -hmm. um i don't even know mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> there was a show on tv um a couple of months ago that I was watching and a group of women were having a conversation about surrogacy and there was an insistence um, that it's not normal for somebody to carry your baby I mean how is that a thing okay so I would say that surrogacy is an option for people who can't carry the babies mm -hmm. it's normal whether it's normal or not it's for when you cannot for some reason carry a baby let's say you have a medical condition for that reason carrying a pregnancy is not possible some people have certain diseases like diabetes hypertension which is quite bad and they may have other medical conditions for which carrying a pregnancy is dangerous to their health mm. or let's say um for some reason whatever reason they can't carry a baby then this person still wants to have children or still wants to be a mother then the option of surrogacy comes in in which you can the egg and the sperm can be taken from the parents to be and then mixture is done when the embryo develops they put in the career and then she carries for them or if let's say the woman doesn't have um, viable eggs they can then take from somebody or the carrier and then they mix with the partner sperm and then it starts to grow it's not really about um it's being normal or not but it's, it's it's a child which you're going to love as your own so if it's not everybody who is going to be able to get pregnant or everybody who's going to carry a baby the most important thing is that at the end of the day that child is yours and then you're going to love the child as your own you're going to grow up with a child and train up the child how it's supposed to be so yes it is an option and it is coming up mm. and as well, women, i mean kim kardashian did it with mm -hmm. i think four or so of her kids yes and so I it definitely brought it to light somebody gabriel gabriel union, union, union as well yes. yeah mm -hmm. yes so it is an option for that and then um if you're able to do that i mean it's it is a beautiful thing to raise a child so i don't think it really is about whether it's normal or not and as women are also advancing and uh, taking up careers which takes up a long time in their lives those options would come on as time goes on and there are people around to do that 
pay yeah. to, yeah, to <laughs> either to donate the eggs or to carry the baby for you. Okay. There, there are people. So how does that work? Well, it's usually done through agencies. So um, the, they give certain requirements. You have to be of a certain age. You have to be of a certain parity, certain health status. You go um, through. Poor parity means. <laughs> oh, sorry, <laughs> parity. The number of children, children you've had. Uh -huh, you've mm -hmm. had. Yes. Yeah. So mm -hmm. there's a criteria as per the requirements. So if you go and then you talk to them and then you fit the criteria, and then there's a, should I say the couple who also wants the child? They also come. They bring in certain things they may require. If that fits the surrogates, then we can start the process of for both of them, both the mother and the intended mother. They can do that and then get the eggs, get the sperms. When it's ready, they inseminate and then the pregnancy starts in the surrogates. surrogates. And then she's taken care of. Mostly, um, there should be some form of, should I say, agreement or illegal something because mm -hmm. a contract a contract mm -hmm. kind of because um this person is going to carry the pregnancy for 40 weeks between 30 to 40 weeks and they could run away yeah they could it's it's, it's, it's an option that you should mm -hmm. have at the back of your mind because they could run you, you can't tie this person to a room or to to a house forever mm. she's she has to try and live her life as normal as possible and then whatever agreement is in the contracts with them you they have to take care of her health bills while she's pregnant the antenatal um visits any labs that needs to be done if she gets sick during the pregnancy they should be able to take care but uh, most of the time the surrogate and then the intending parents are not supposed to meet. see each other or meet so they never of, know each other it's not advisable because okay. of several other things that can happen somebody can go and say oh that's my child okay i know you live in this house I'm, I'm claiming my child back or something of that sort yeah so <laughs> yeah. it's really not advisable that they meet so mostly um they do it through a lawyer the um, agency the hospital and then the interning couple mm -hmm. so that's whatever happens is channeled through that okay mm -hmm. and so there's no direct contact there's no direct contact so they take care of the person till the pregnancy's term and then the baby is delivered after delivery then it's given to the intending parents and then the surrogate is also taking care of in her postnatal period till she crosses the postnatal and then whatever she was due they give it to her I, I i i've mentioned the show to um a gentleman friend of mine and he said that so when because he's married and he's mm -hmm. his he was there for the birth of his kid so when you've carried somebody's child for nine months mm -hmm. And then you have the baby and you know your your uterus is contracting your boobs are full of milk you're you're releasing all of these bonding hormones and then this baby is just snatched from you mm -hmm. even though you know um that the baby is going to be taken away and this baby is snatched from you and you know given to this guy how it's, it's, not, it's, it's not, not snatched, snatched. <laughs> no i mean <laughs> Funny how we're all yeah, there. Yeah, it's not snatched. Snatched. I mean, but it's not snatched. Away. I mean, they're not allowed to nurse the baby no, or to no, no, but no. It's you know, like Dr. Nita was saying, it's an agreement. Mm -hmm. So it's as simple as you know, I'm unable to do this right now. My body's unable to do, you know, this A, B, and C, and so it's an agreement with somebody else to be able to do that for me. Mm -hmm. And we're using the functioning reproductive system as the vehicle or the utility to be able to produce a baby that we would both love and cherish and nourish and everything uh so the surrogate understands yep. what this is about and most surrogates are empaths and they're very understanding and they want to be able to do to this help. for yes. the next yes. woman who is unable to do that so a lot of them come from a really good place and they're willing and happy to be able to have carried that child for the person who is unable to for whatever reason so it's not like um i was bound and then my baby was taken away from me you know so that's that's really not the case okay. um and everything when it's done well like dr nita said between the contracting agency between the attorneys and between the surrogates and the couple everything should rel be you know smooth Relatively as smooth. as it should be and usually at the end of the day the surrogate is happy to have been able to do that and to gift that joy to the 
couple. Okay. So usually it's not a snatch, a snatch type of situation. situation. <laughs> there are a few, I think I've read a few issues <laughs> in the States where um, the surrogate that decides not to give a baby to them mm -hmm. after like when it's getting this, to time yeah. or when the baby is born so i think it all brought about um the reason why these contracts were written to protect both the surrogates and the couple because it can go both ways the surrogates at some points can say no i don't want to hand over the pregnancy the baby and the couple could split up and decide we don't want, we don't the, want baby the baby anymore, anymore. yes yeah, so all those um, issues come up so that's why always there is a contract so that everybody understands before you enter that this is what is going to happen don't expect to bond with a baby we don't expect you to do that that's why immediately the baby is born the baby is taken away because the the longer you spend with a baby the more the you more start than, to yeah. love and then start to bond and mm -hmm. then you feel like my baby has been taken away From when me, yeah. after some time and then also um when um the process is starting that's why we advise that the woman should have some let's say one or two children because okay. it's a lot easier to carry for someone when, when you, you had your yours own. rather than when you haven't started at all and then you have the whole emotional roller coaster, coaster making you feel like oh somebody has taken my child and i mean it's it's not the best so um surrogate babies i'm mm -hmm. just calling them that because um I, i'm not breastfed then because if you didn't carry then you're not going to produce milk or is there a way to stimulate the yes production? some some people are able to stimulate the breast to produce milk and it, i mean milk production responds to certain hormones in your body okay so, so you can a woman to produce even in america there are people who are called breast milk producers mm -hmm. they're not necessarily pregnant all they are being um, given is drugs to stimulate their breasts to keep on producing milk to okay. store yeah. for people who may need mm -hmm. that okay and then there are also options for breast milk okay. like actual breast milk okay i'm not sure whether they are in ghana in but ghana. in many places there are milk banks there are milk banks that, that you can, can you know for request from they freeze it and it's mm -hmm. you know perfectly fine definitely and not ghana because we are still doing oh you never know you never know <laughs> it's maybe really not yet <laughs> maybe yeah. not yet yeah. but uh, a woman but can yeah. be made to okay. produce breast milk mm -hmm. for the baby mm -hmm. so i guess alongside the pr the pregnancy mm -hmm. you kind of prepare yourself so by the time the baby is born and handed yes. over to you then you are you can now breastfeed because I, I wonder um, whether the, the mothers who are, are co co first collecting, uh, are receiving mm -hmm. their children feel the, the, the bond. Is it something that would be instant or would it be something that will be built over time? Because you know how it is when you, you're pregnant, you, you've had 40 weeks. There's mm -hmm. the kicking. The, the, so you know this human being already before they come out. Yes. But then it's like, okay, 40 weeks later, you know, here's your baby. But you know that bonding with a child mm -hmm. is not automatic. Okay. Yes. I mean, yes, you didn't carry the child, but the child has your genes or mm -hmm. has your partner's genes. So from day one, as you take the baby, you feed the baby, you burp the baby, change the diapers, baby cries, you have some good moments, you have some sad moments. As the whole process keeps on going day in, day out, there is some kind of bond mm -hmm. that would form between the mother and the child. And then as they grow up together, then generally the whole love and adoration or <laughs> mother child thing should start i mean it, it, you're not gonna get it like you carried it of course yourself yes but there is still a bond mother yeah. child bond especially no. if mm -hmm. it was your eggs that was used i mean it doesn't really matter it doesn't really change yeah. it. Mm -hmm. but i would say traditionally we've had moms that were not actually <laughs> our birth moms or biological mm -hmm. moms that we love dearly yeah. just as if they were our they mothers, were our mothers. So yes. it's really the same thing mm -hmm. uh, when you look at things so um bonding like doctor said it's not always automatic mm -hmm. it's what is expected however you know people who may not have carried their children themselves mm -hmm. also are fully capable of loving that child children, yeah. you, you know just as if they had carried it, uh, the baby themselves so okay. uh, we should we really should open ourselves up to these alternatives because yeah. there are people who really do struggle with fertility issues and would wish that that was not the case however this is what it is and so we should be open as a society to somebody who's willing to explore other options if that is what they really want for themselves i was okay. just actually gonna i mean we're kind of out of time so so, but I was actually just going to ask you, um, Dr. Lecha, that if 
um, where we've reached in life right mm-hmm. now, if you're struggling to get pregnant and it's it's going on and on and on, and and you are sitting down crying and you know wailing and all of that, th- there's really no reason for that anymore, is there? Well, I'll, I'll leave the obstetrics part to, to Dr. Nita, <laughs> but uh, if I'm coming from the public health point of view where people's mental health is important uh, to me, um, will there be times where you have tears and, and sadness and crying? Yes. And I think it's only natural. Uh, you know, it's, it's a natural desire. Mm-hmm. And, you know, if it's proven to be difficult, it can create difficulties in your marriage. Mm-hmm. It can create difficulties with your in-laws. It can create difficulties because society has expectations and people can, you know, often utter very unkind, you know, insensitive comments. Yeah. Um, so sometimes we just need to pace ourselves if you're feeling emotional about infertility issues that's perfectly normal Mm -hmm. you know it's perfectly normal Um, of course your your uh, obstetrician gynecologist would discuss all the other clinical aspects related to that they could also support you with some counseling Uh, you could also you know read things about your mental health and your own wellness to be able to deal with the difficulty it is a difficult situation so let's not be surprised when people actually have you know emotional difficulties dealing with it so let's yeah. be kind and let's be patient with them and then dr nita can do the the clinical yeah, better okay. yes, <laughs> yes. so i would say that if you're having difficulties with fertility there are options available mm. we have depending on where the cause is coming from if the cause is from the man the, sh- the person should be um, examined, the person should be investigated. If the cause is treatable, then they should treat that cause so that their fertility comes back to normal. If it's from the woman, several reasons why a woman cannot have a child, those options should be explored, they should investigate and then find out why they can't carry. If those um, should I say those causes of infertility are solved majority of the time, this couple are able to have kids but if for some reason still after that time you can't have kids then we have the ivf options Mm. available we can step higher to the ivf options if they are not possible then we can go to say surrogacy if all that is also not possible then adoption is also there so it's not about um for some reason if you can't have kids it's like it's the end of the line for you there are several options that you can sit with your obstetrician or your gynecologist and then you discuss with a person and then there's also apart from the public health aspects you also have clinical psychologists so that if you're going through these difficult times you can talk to them and then they, i mean it's not easy to in our part of the world it's not easy not to have a child everybody sees you like some esteem or some yeah. level in society to have a child it's yeah. not everybody who can have a child so if you can't have it and you're going through difficult times these are options available, available there are you. egg donors available there are mm. sperm donors available if for some reason your sperm your partner sperm or your eggs don't work we can use these people to help should i say substitute to have mm-hmm. kids for you mm-hmm. so that you you can still get the kids you want and then the last one is the adoption option yeah. which is also available in yeah thank you so much <laughs> thank you so much and um, fertility is such a big conversation yes, so many women mm-hmm. are in pain yes and yes. um, when it comes to this option so i'm really grateful mm-hmm. that um both of you took time out mm-hmm. to join mm-hmm. us thank you so much you're most welcome um well that's strong and sassy um for <laughs> us for today a very big thank you to dr demi lecher Drea and Dr. Nita Samwa Menuchima. Thank you so 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 okay. much. Okay. Um, it's welcome. it's we've been live on Facebook, <laughs> so if you missed any part of it, you can go to Facebook and catch up, and you can put your questions underneath. Um, I will pick them and then forward them to the doctors, um, okay. so that we can give you feedback. Let's keep the conversation going, um, because we really want to um support mm-hmm. you know yes, women certainly. who are yes definitely. Mm-hmm. A few people yeah. have asked for your number. Okay. Um, um, so is it okay to to give it <laughs> <laughs> or should i just direct them to shape yes yes direct them to, to shape, shape brother <laughs> yeah, yes. my, okay. my, my team dr Sephoga, we all work there okay. so mm. if they have any issues it'd be better they come there okay and, then, and yes. of course i will direct them to your office yes um, they can you as, know, as, reach as out well. yes, yes. Mm-hmm. on our website here www.tfhogana all lowercase.org 
Um, so if any questions they have about family planning and contraception, we'd be happy to answer them. Okay. Yes. And in case you didn't know, TFHO is um is the peeps who bring yeah. ebony condoms. I'm sure you as well as our ebony condoms yes, and, indeed, and secure contraceptive yes, pills. Those well. are brands. Yeah, those yes. are your brands. So um you can definitely <laughs> reach out. But I have a show on Facebook also called Time with Dr. Anita. Okay. Yes. It talks about fertility, it talks about pregnancy, it talks about I have some videos on contraception as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. So yes. what times? Um, it's it's on Facebook anytime. Okay, so you the can videos just are go there, and find. so you can okay. just log on. Mm -hmm. Time with Dr. Anita, and then look for whatever you want to find. It's a um, show that keeps on. I keep on video and putting videos there from okay, time to time. Okay, okay. So, so there's always information. Yes, there's always information. There. Okay. <laughs> well, thank you so much okay. for joining us. Thank you. Too. Um, I would like to say a very big thank you to Dr. Promise Sefoga, mm -hmm. who supported us to come up with tonight's conversation. Um, and it's not a conversation that we have often, so we're really excited that we're able yes, to do that. You know, um, Dr. Safaga, um, his clinic is Shape Clinic, and when it comes to IVF, surrogacy, egg freeze, and if you need any information on that, you want a specific place to go to, the website is www.shapehealthcare.org. Um, you can also find them on Facebook and Instagram at Shape Healthcare MC. Get over there, get the information you need, get some support. Um, just, you know, get it moving. There you, you don't need to sit at home and be sad at, at all. all. <laughs> There's so many, yes. so yeah. many uh, options. We've, we've yeah. moved on. We've really moved yeah. on from I can't have a child, you're crying mm -hmm. in the house, to mm -hmm. I can't have a child, what are my options? Exactly, yes, yes. exactly. Mm -hmm. So Shape Healthcare MC, Facebook and Instagram. Also a big thank you to Lola Locks um, for my hair. You can find them on Facebook as Lola Locks. Um, and finally, a big thank you to Dr. Lecha and Dr. Nita. Um, thank you. I'm really, really grateful. Okay. I'm really, really grateful. I remember the anymore. advert that said, if it's not on, it's not in. So get your ebony condoms. Hello. <laughs> yes, people. Make sure you do. Make sure exactly. you do. Exactly. Yes. Yes. Protection matters. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> um, follow me on my social media pages. Instagram's Enimwa underscore AA. Facebook, Enimwa Enimado. And TikTok, name Sparkle. I'm getting um, more your friend is saying at the time so you can find me on tiktok please don't laugh at my sparkle. videos Nim okay. sparkles. Uh, and please don't laugh at my videos but thank you so so much we'll be back next week coming up next is football and um, the boys are going to storm the studio soon so um decide who you are supporting and let's make some noise stay safe out there my name is anima back next week a big thank you to abeku mirabel crispy the whole team you guys are so amazing thank you all right we're going now